and excessive force and is brought to us by 6ABC Philadelphia's channel. Be sure to check out the description below and give them the credit that they deserve. On May 25th, 2018, 20-year-old Philadelphia resident Emily Weinman was sitting with a friend on a beach in Wildwood, New Jersey, when she was approached by Officer Thomas Cannon and Officer Robert Jordan of the Wildwood Police Department. Both officers were Class 2 Special Law Enforcement Officers, which, as the Wildwood PD's website explains, are temporary officers brought on to assist with the tourist population during the summer months, with most Special Law Enforcement Officers being college students earning credits towards their degree through the program. After approaching Ms. Weinman, Officer Cannon and what? Officer Jordan began to question her about some unopened bottles of alcoholic- you Guys, is this- wait, no, that's not even cadet though, that's like, that's like nothing. Twisted teas that were sitting beside a cooler near where Ms. Weinman and her friend were sitting. So your parents? My aunt. Oh, your aunt? Where's your aunt at? On her way. She left, she's coming back. So she's coming back? Cool, do me a favor. Take a deep breath and blow into that, all right? Do you have to? You don't have to. All right, do me a favor. Try one more time. Deep breath. Don't put it. Don't go too so far in. You guys, do you do you have to? I don't think you have to do anything, right? Is there a standard problem? Mind your business. All right, where's your hand at? You have a phone number? Not probable cause for that. Wait. How old are you? I know that didn't come up positive. I didn't take a drink of anything, so. All right, we're. Yo guys, even if it's your aunt, she is of age. Guys, 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 I mean I'm wrong about this, yes, but reasonable suspicion and probable cause is two different. Probable cause is something they, they, you didn't even prove based on, on, on facts. Like, you, you, I don't think you can just say, yo, blow in the balloon, yo, lol. Oh, you look, you look. You're just chilling. You could be drunk blowing this bubble. What? All right, go grab her real quick. We're gonna have them pour that all out. How are you gonna let us go? We didn't even drink alcohol. All right. Well, where's your aunt at? You're allowed to carry. You're allowed to carry alcohol. That's interesting. You're You are. You're not allowed to drink it, and we did not. Open drink display it. on the beach. What? It's possession open consumption. Display. It's not open. Open display means. What do you mean? That doesn't you can mean see anything. It, yes. Okay, you can see it, and uh, we're not drinking. 5043. Show me how that little calendar in the beach. Uh. The officers inform yeah. Ms. Weinman that it is illegal for underage individuals to have alcohol in their possession and in public view on the beach, even if they do not consume them. And this is an accurate statement of the applicable law. Yeah. Section 2C33-15 of the New Jersey statutes makes it a non-criminal disorderly person's offense for a person under the age of 21 to knowingly possess without legal authority or knowingly consume an alcoholic beverage in a public place. Similarly, Section 4-1.2 of Wildwood municipal code states that quote chat isn't a loophole to this just put a bag over your thing like the one of these brown bags that's, that's just a loophole it shall be a violation of this section for any person to commit any of the following acts on the beach boardwalk or boardwalk approaches during the months of may june july august and september of each year openly display expose or dispense or offer to dispense or to consume any beer wine whiskey or other alcoholic beverages however it is possible that a court would find that ms weinman did not have the twisted teas in her possession as they allegedly belong to her aunt and were simply nearby the location where she was sitting. In general, an individual can be charged True. with a possession-based offense if they have actual or quote-unquote constructive possession of an object. As the Supreme Court of New Jersey explained in the 2006 case of State v. Morrison, quote, a person has actual possession of an object when he has physical or manual control of it. Alternatively, a person has constructive possession of an object when, although he lacks physical or manual control, the circumstances permit a reasonable inference that he has knowledge of its presence and intends and has the capacity to exercise physical control or dominion I'm over it during a span this of time. Makes, this if the yeah, twisted piece did though. belong to Miss Weinman's aunt and Miss Weinman had not carried them or otherwise exerted physical control over them and did not intend to do so. Ms. So if you don't touch it when they're there, 
and you don't say anything, and it actually goes to court, you win by a landslide. Weinman would have a strong argument right? that she did not possess any alcoholic beverages. However, the court would likely agree that the officers at least had the reasonable suspicion necessary to detain Ms. Weinman, both to investigate whether she was underage and in possession of alcohol, and because the beverages were openly displayed in violation of the local ordinance. So how about that? Do you want me for you know what you just said? Well, the show you have manual control is that you have to be you have to be in contact with it, or or, or you're holding it, right? Or 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 if it's in the vicinity, then it has to be it, it, it has to be it has to be reasonable in context that that it's yours, right? Uh, you want the water over there? Yeah, you're not cooperating. So yeah. like, you're, I didn't disrespect you. I didn't do anything to get written up. Did now I? You're holding the seat. Now you're closing the seat. I'm you want it? Seat. All right. I'll give you one more chance to give me your last name. Let's just be cooperative. Okay. You can't lock me up. I didn't disrespect you. Okay. And you're and I you don't need to write my name down either because I didn't disrespect you. I didn't do anything to you. You're mad because we thought we were drinking. 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 Right, I'll give you one. Your brother left. Okay. First of all, you you you're in possession. Where, where's your aunt at then? She's on her way. Okay, what's your last you name? You could wait here. That's like you wasted your time coming over here. You could wait here for her. Okay, what's your last name? You don't need my last name. The officers ask Ms. Weinman to provide her last name and threaten to arrest her for obstruction if she does not comply with their demands. Hmm? But she refuses and claims that she has not broken any laws. Although New Jersey does not have a stop and identify statute that would require Ms. Weinman to identify herself to the officers, Section 2C33-15 oh, of the New again. Jersey Statutes, which is the underage alcohol possession statute we discussed earlier, does subject underage individuals who possess or consume alcohol to certain penalties, including a written warning issued by a law enforcement officer to the underage person for first-time offenders. Now, quoting, The written warning shall include the person's name, address, and date of birth, and a copy of the warning containing this information, plus a sworn statement that includes a description of the relevant facts and circumstances that support the officer's determination that the person committed the violation. Therefore, it is possible that the officers were attempting to identify Ms. Weinman in order to write this written warning, or check her record for previous violations, which would subject her to additional penalties. However, Ms. Weinman Weinman likely could not be found guilty of obstruction for simply refusing to provide her last name. According to Section 2C29-1 of the New Jersey Statutes, quote, A person commits an offense if he purposely obstructs, impairs, or perverts the... Guys, guys why, why doesn't the, the, the country just say, Hey man, here are the laws of the country. Why is it all every state, every bullshit, or other governmental fuck like, or prevents dude, or attempts to dude, you can work years to get your, to get your bar license in, in, in a state, you go to the other one, it's the fucking wild west, dude, public nobody gives a fuck about half the shit, like, what, what's happening here, dude? Flight, intimidation, force, violence, or physical interference or obstacle, or by means of any independently unlawful act. As the appellate division of the Superior Court of New Jersey explained in the 2005 case of State v. Camilo, quote, Simply obstructing, impairing, or perverting the administration of law or the governmental function is no longer a statutory violation. The obstruction must be carried out in a manner described in the statute. The court then concluded that an individual could not be convicted of obstruction for refusing to provide his name, date of birth, and social security number because, quote, he did not physically interfere with Trooper Dykeman. What he did was refuse to provide what? information the trooper required to complete his incident report. While defendant's actions may, in fact, have in a real sense obstructed the trooper from preparing his report, that conduct that in the sense. absence of physical interference is not a violation. For this reason, it is highly unlikely that Ms. Weinman could be convicted of obstruction for refusing to give her name. Said I'm done with you. Do you have cuffs on you? No, man. Get over here. Don't talk to me. Yo. Don't touch me. Or you're about to get dropped. Uh oh. Yo, don't touch me, man. You don't. Get over here. What are you doing? Don't. After briefly chasing Ms. Weinman a short distance across the beach, she turns around and shoves the officer before being thrown to the ground. Uh -oh. Ms. Weinman immediately begins resisting the officers and calling out to her nearby friends. At some point during the scuffle, one of the officers punches Ms. Weinman in the head several times before managing to restrain her. I wasn't drinking anything! Just smell it! Stop! I can't believe you did that! Get off of me! Don't stare unless you're gonna help! 
Yeah, that was a fucking disaster. Oh yeah, now we got these young cops who know how to treat people. I'm gonna talk to Captain as if he will get too. Good, I hope you do. Well, dirt ball. No, who are you? Dirt ball. Ms. Weinman's boyfriend criticizes the officers for their decision to punch Ms. Weinman during the confrontation. It is undisputed that officers are entitled to use reasonable force to execute an arrest or detention. As the Supreme Court explained in the 1989 case of Graham v. Connor, quote, our Fourth Amendment jurisprudence has long recognized that the right to make an arrest or investigatory stop necessarily carries with it the right to use some degree of physical coercion or threat thereof to affect it. Yeah, well, According that was to not the National Institute though, dude. of Justice, most law enforcement agencies have policies that recognize a, quote, use of force continuum. Wait, wait, especially if, if they're physically better and outnumbered and, and, and you know, and it's a, it's a woman and it's two bigger bigger men that is not reasonable you and wouldn't be quote, ever be able to describe argue that. an escalating series of actions an officer may take to resolve a situation this continuum generally has Penis many levels and you know. officers are instructed to respond with a level of force appropriate to the situation at hand acknowledging that the officer may move from one part of the continuum to another in a matter of seconds in some situations, a closed fist punch is considered an appropriate method of control or restraint and a constitutional use of force. A closed fist punch is a type of quote-unquote empty hand control, where officers use bodily force alone to restrain a citizen, and is a mid-level escalation in a typical use of force continuum. Kicks and punches are known as quote-unquote hard techniques, and are considered a step above the soft empty hand techniques, such as grabs, holds, and joint locks on the use of force continuum. It is difficult to predict whether a court would conclude that punching Ms. Weinman was an excessive use of force, or if it was constitutionally valid. Oh, wait, but it was the multiple, though. analysis is highly circumstantial. For instance, in the 2009 case of Husbands versus City of New York, the Second Circuit held that, as a matter of law, a single punch to the torso of an individual who was resisting being put in handcuffs Bruh, did not rise to the level of excessive force. But in the 2013 system, case of Martinez versus Snyder, how. the District Court of Delaware held that a reasonable jury could conclude that punching an individual in the face hard enough to fracture her orbital bone was excessive and not reasonable under the circumstances. Well, no shit. The court explained that while the suspect did resist arrest, quote, it is unclear whether it was necessary for Williams to punch her in the Jesus. face in order to effect arrest. A jury could find that plaintiff, a female of small size, did not appear to be intoxicated, possessed no weapons, was held down on the ground by both defendants, had only one hand free, and did not seem to be trying to seriously injure defendants. Because whether a punch defendants. constitutes excessive force substantially depends on a jury or judge's discretion and oh, interpretation the in the facts, the, the, it is possible the that the decision sorry. could go either way. I'm done. How old is she? Yeah, well, she tried kicking us, so that's it. Yeah, she did. Yeah, my man's just laughing. I go to. Yeah, it's fine. I go to stop her for LO for underage drinking. She said she's 20. She had twisted tees. She wouldn't give me her last name. So I said, hey, if you're not going to give me your information, you're going to be locked up. She tried walking away from me. But she tried walking away from me. I tried grabbing her. She tried kicking at us. So we slammed her on the ground. She kicked him. And then I just thought I hit her a couple times. And then I put her in cuffs. Locked her up. Ms. Weinman was placed under arrest and transported to the Wildwood Police Station. She was charged with disorderly conduct, resisting arrest, and obstruction all of which are disorderly persons offenses and not crimes. A bystander on the beach had filmed part of the confrontation and shared the video on social media, uh -oh. leading to an international outcry about the officer's conduct. After the footage went viral, Ms. Weinman was charged with several criminal offenses, including two counts of aggravated assault, throwing bodily fluids in the third degree, resisting arrest in the third degree, and hindering apprehension in the fourth degree. However, Ms. Weinman eventually pled guilty to a single charge of disorderly conduct, which is a petty disorderly person's offense. The huh? Cape May County Prosecutor's Office conducted wait. an investigation into whether- Wait, I don't, wait, I don't get it. Wait. Wait, what? Their officers Cannon and Jordan used excessive force when arrested. Well, wait, she pled guilty to something that was initially she was going to get charged with only one 
and then that negated everything that she was going to get, plus the one that were being additional. Ms. Weinman, and determined that there was insufficient evidence to warrant criminal charges. However, on October 14th, 2019, Ms. Weinman filed a federal lawsuit against the officers and the city of Wildwood. And in November of 2020, the city agreed to pay a $325,000 settlement. Overall, the Wildwood Only special law enforcement officers get an F. Because although the officers likely had reasonable suspicion to investigate Ms. Weinman, they baselessly threatened to arrest her for obstruction, failed to employ any measure of de-escalation, and used a disproportionate degree of force to subdue Ms. Weinman. The Wildwood special officers were well within their authority to approach Ms. Weinman and detain her under the suspicion that she was openly displaying alcohol on the beach. However, considering that New Jersey is not a stop and identify state, Ms. Weinman was not obligated to present her identification until the officers acquired probable cause and arrested or cited her. Instead of waiting a reasonable amount of time to investigate whether Ms. Weinman's claims were true, the officer decided to arrest- Guys, I get it. That's why chat looks so dumb every day. And I'm, I, I sound dumb. It's because sometimes you watch a video and somebody, and somebody says, that's illegal. And I say, no, dude, that's legal. And we say in chat, no, that's not legal, is it? Because everyone lives in different fucking random bullshit kick on states. Test her for refusing to provide. And the law is different name. in every it piece of land. It is clear from body camera footage that the primary everybody's, arresting everybody's officer lost. was frustrated with Ms. Weinman's attitude, and this is likely why the officer failed to consider the disparity of force that existed between himself and Ms. Weinman. Standard protocol in any use of force situation generally considers the physical characteristics of the suspect, such as age, size, gender, and apparent strength. And it is clear that the two special officers had a distinct physical advantage over Ms. Weinman. This is likely why the city of Wildwood agreed to the settlement. Yeah, Ms. Weinman also gets an F for failing to invoke her right to remain silent, refusing to comply with the lawful orders of the officers, and for physically attacking one of the officers as he approached her. As mentioned on many episodes of ATA, resisting an arrest is never a good idea, regardless of the circumstances. And it is much more productive to fight your battle for justice in the courtroom, not on the street. The body camera footage clearly shows Ms. Weinman shoving the officer just before she's taken down. And footage from other bystanders shows her continuing to resist while on the ground. At no point during the interaction did Ms. Weinman invoke her right to remain silent. And she refused to obey I mean, several lawful would notice, commands while maintaining a hostile and condescending demeanor. All that said, nothing that Ms. Weinman did justified the level of force that the Wildwood Special Officers employed. While I do commend Ms. Weinman for following up this interaction with the proper legal action, I would caution other citizens in a similar situation to remain as plus calm K is not bad. as possible That's a good while bonus. verbally invoking the right to remain silent. Let us know if there is an interaction or legal topic you would like us to discuss in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to check out my second channel for even more police I think the video will content. audit the audits. Thank you, sir. That was interesting. I enjoyed that. I enjoyed that. It was pretty good.